Dajahao, I'm Nathan Rich, aka Bugo Dawang. Today I want to talk to you about a YouTuber named Sargon of Akkad. I have gotten a lot of messages recently asking me why I go after smaller channels like Tim Pool and Sargon of Akkad. And I do think it is important to point out how they talk about China. Because even though they are much smaller than me, they have quite a bit of influence in the political discussions that happen in America. So without further ado, let's take a look at one of the recent videos by Sargon of Akkad. Bill Maher did an oopsie. That means Bill Maher said something that was factually true. No, he didn't say something that was factually true. I've already thoroughly debunked his video, which you can take a look at right now if you haven't seen it. The weird thing is you didn't bother to actually check it yourself and yet you're saying it's factually true. So what is that saying about you, Sargon? Carl Benjamin, AKA Sargon of Akkad, goes on about how people on Twitter and other places are calling Bill racist for what he said. Everything's racist. Sargon really focuses on a certain group in the extreme left of America and other places that are ultra PC and call everybody racist at the drop of a dime. So I actually agree with you here, Sargon. I think that uh, Bill Maher wasn't necessarily being racist, although he did talk about race quite a lot in that video. But I think we can agree that at least he doesn't think he's being racist and he's not intentionally racist. Let's just put it that way. Then Sargon says Bill is fighting back against people who are trying to... Excuse the fact that it came from China, which is a really bizarre thing since China is at this point essentially a fascist country. Well, first of all, I don't agree with anybody who's trying to excuse that it came from China. As far as we know, it did come from China. That's what the facts tell us. What I'm concerned about is people who go out of their way to promote that idea as if that's a relevant point to all conversations. The motives there are questionable to say the very least. And also Bill doesn't seem to be fighting that. He seems to be promoting the idea that we should call it the China virus for some reason that he never really explained. But what bothers me more here, Sargon, is that, you know, you're kind of an amateur historian, like an amateur political guy, you're very knowledgeable in these things, and yet you just called China a fascist country. I don't know if you've forgotten what fascism is, or if you think that it's synonymous with authoritarianism. I feel gaslit. I'm actually questioning my own reality. Like, you do understand words like totalitarianism, fascism, communism, socialism, libertarianism. You do understand those words, right? They have have meaning. China's clearly not a fascist country, and yet you've just barfed that out. One party dictatorship that is persecuting Muslims in their country, persecuting black people in the country, if social media reports or anything to go by. <laughs> they have been responsible for 100,000 deaths worldwide because they covered up the coronavirus outbreak. They made dissidents disappear. They run this social credit system. I don't need to expound to you the problems with China. And then he just goes on about a bunch of stuff that he doesn't like that's related to authoritarianism or what he's arguing is more like totalitarianism. And neither of those are inherently fascist. This is a common misconception that people who don't understand words make. I mean, I kind of expect it more from you, buddy. I can explain this to you in another video, but just a little teaser. There's something in common that all fascist governments have that no socialist or communist governments have. That's the essence of what makes them fascist. Can you think of what that is? If you can't, then you can watch my upcoming video. The Chinese wet markets are a problem, and Bill Maher said, well, look, these are like a nuclear bomb. They've killed 100,000 people. That's true. They have. They are in the sort of range of damage that nuclear weapons have done in the past when used on civilian targets. So it's not necessarily an inaccurate comparison. Obviously, the method's completely different, but that's beside the point. What? <laughs> what? That's besides the point. That is exactly the point, dude. I mean, just imagine how far down into your own BS you have to be to say something like a disease spreading from one country to another is the same type of thing as the first country nuking the other one. Sargon, why does nobody say that the HIV AIDS pandemic that started in America was like hundreds or thousands of nuclear bombs all over the world? Why 
does no one say that? I mean, it killed 32 million people, Sargon. Why don't other countries say the United States has bombed us with nukes? I mean, should we be nuking America for the nuclear bomb-sized H1N1 outbreak that they spread across the world while the CDC continuously lied about the cases again and again and again, month after month after month? What should we do about that, Sargon? I admit I haven't really watched your videos in a long time, but when did you become such a neocon like Warhawk? Bill Maher goes on despicably racist rant against China over coronavirus. He did in his segment say explicitly that when he say he says China, he's talking about the Chinese Communist Party. What are you talking about? You just literally made that up. The video that you're showing on your screen, he doesn't say anything like that. The person who wrote this article is right and you are wrong. He specifically says to blame China, but not Chinese Americans. And he talks about race several times in that video. And then Sargon complains about the government of China for a long time, and then talks smack about the author of this article for not knowing that Bill was actually talking about the government, even though Bill didn't say that at all, and Sargon is just lying and saying that he did for some reason. I mean, did you even watch this video, dude? You said it's factual, which it isn't. And you said he's talking about the government, which he never said. I'm willing to believe that Marlo Stern is in fact completely ignorant of all of these things, but given his level of education, he's got a master's degree in journalism apparently, I'm going to say that he's well aware of what China's like, and he is in fact a dishonest actor. He is in fact an ideologue. He is in fact a communist sympathizer. Yes, because the author didn't lie about the contents of the video like you did, he's dishonest. If only we could be as honest as the liar that you've just proven yourself to be. Look, I'm kind of messing with you because I assume that you just didn't realize that you lied. I assume you saw some other video that their viewpoint was clear and you kind of transposed it. I don't know what happened, but the video that you're showing, as far as what I saw, he doesn't say anything like that. And yet you go on this tirade slamming the author of this article because you misunderstood something. So let's see, Sargon, what an honest actor like you thinks when they go through this article. Scientists who are pretty liberal, they name diseases after places, all true makes sense. Well, that didn't last long, so much for honesty. No, it doesn't make sense, as I showed in my other video, which you would know if you had even checked one of them. None of his examples support what he's saying. Zero of them. In fact, there are some that specifically go against what he's saying. But uh, he goes, there's the Spanish flu. To which this chap says, yeah, Ma didn't even know that the Spanish flu did not originate in Spain. Well, I imagine that people at the time didn't realize that it didn't originate in Spain. That's the problem, Sargon. You imagine that, but that's not the case. Nobody thought that. No one has ever thought that. I mean, you're imagining that's right, but it isn't. Do you have any responsibility to your viewers to actually be telling the truth or give them some facts? Or are you just, I imagine that that's what people thought back then. I'm too lazy to actually look it up, but I imagine that. Here you go. But that's where the first outbreak took place, wasn't it? Well, what do you mean, wasn't it? Do you know or you don't know? The answer is no, that's not where it started. So you're wrong again. I mean, what kind of an honest actor are you being, buddy? You're just literally telling people a bunch of non-facts and imagining that they're true. Meanwhile, the guy you're calling a dishonest actor at least got that part right that you're slamming him for. Nobody believes that the Spanish flu started in Spain. I mean, I guess except for the people dumb enough to follow what you're saying without looking it up themselves. So they called it the Spanish flu. This is a flu coming from Spain, as far as they can tell. No, it was. <laughs> what are you talking about, dude? Oh, dude. This is really embarrassing. They didn't first notice it occurring in Spain either. Man, you are so desperate. You're trying so hard to get some wrong point across. You'll do anything to get it across, except for research. That you won't do. The actual technical origination of the virus is far less important than where people simply first noticed it occurring. And this ridiculous notion that it should be named after where people first noticed it or identified it is a very, very bad thing for the United Kingdom and the United States. I hope you understand that. If you've seen my other video talking about the Chinese virus name, then you'll know that what you just said will be a foot in your own mouth as the Western countries will be so overrepresented in diseases, we'll literally have to start calling things United States Disease 1, United States Disease 2, United States Disease 57. There's so many of them that you will immediately regret saying what you just did. It goes on to complain about the structure of Bill's argument, but the thing is the structure of Bill's argument is perfectly fine. So 
there's not really a lot he can say about it. This isn't a contest to see who can structure arguments correctly. The contents of his argument are what's important, and they were wrong. He used a bunch of facts that were wrong and other ones that actually disproved his whole point. And there was little or nothing that actually supported it. So the structure of it was okay and that he sat there and read from some cue cards, but the actual argument was ridiculous. He goes, there was more, of course, like comparing the animals sold at Chinese wet markets to nuclear bombs. No, comparing the, the wet markets themselves to nuclear bombs. No, comparing the animals that they sold to nuclear bombs, dude. Again, you're correcting the author and the author is right and you're wrong. If they were selling nuclear suitcases at these wet markets, would we be so non-judgmental? And isn't this pretty close to what they are selling? And I don't care about the Daily Beast. I'm just going off of your video. You're saying that they said something and then you're correcting them and the original thing was correct. Bill Maher didn't compare the wet markets to nuclear bombs. He compared the animals to nuclear bombs. Because it turns out they've just killed 100,000 people, mate. I don't know who you mean by they. They just killed 100,000 people. Who? Chinese people? Are you calling African slaves nuclear bombs because they had sickle cell disease? Or like, wh where's your logical consistency, dude? If you take what you're saying and apply it across the board, you get a horrible nightmare scenario. I mean, I'm just, I, I can't wait to see your video equating Haitian slaves with nuclear bombs and tell us just what it is you think we should do about these Haitians. I would have thought that left-wingers would, would be concerned about animal rights, and if there's one thing that I think China's wet markets don't adhere to, it's Western standards of animal rights. These seem cruel and inhumane to me. I don't understand why somebody in Asia would care what Western standards for something were. I mean, unless you're trying to push out Western ideology to the world, that's just called imperialism. That's very right-wing, fascistic idea. Doesn't mean that it's wrong, okay? But that's what it is. So if you're a right-winger, just say it. I, I thought that you called yourself a libertarian or something. And I'm not sure you really know what a wet market is, buddy. You know it's just a butchery, right? Or a produce market, any fresh market? Is it that you think the term wet is from the blood? Is that what you think? It's from water because they use ice because most of it is seafood. I watched a video of a guy frying a dog alive. It was awful. Wow, that is awful. That, that's really gross. W what's your point, dude? What, what does this have to do with anything? I just watched a video of a pig being boiled alive in the West. What, and? These wet markets are disgusting. So you saw a horrific video of a dog, and also all butcheries and produce stores should be closed down because you think they're gross. This is such a weird thing that happens that I guess I had too, but I see this a lot in Americans and British people, I'm sure other countries too, where people get this idea that like, oh, the whole world should be how I want them to be. It's very weird. A while ago, I actually offered to bring Sargon out to China so him and I could do some discussions. I said, we'll do a video at the beginning, we'll do a video at some point while you're here, and then we'll do a video at the end. And you can believe whatever you want, but I wanna see how your views change when you've actually been here and gone around and experienced things. Because the way you talk about it is so weird. Like, do you think you and I should go to some seafood markets and tell them that they should shut down? Because, well, he saw a video where dogs were being mistreated. Are you talking about pushing for animal rights? Because maybe I could get behind that, but it sounds like you just want to basically shut down the economy of China because you saw a sad video. Chinese do not have any respect for the well-being of these animals. I guess you're right. I mean, Chinese people don't seem to care about the well-being of the animals that they're going to eat. I don't know what you're exactly comparing this to, but I mean, is there some country that does care about this that I'm not aware of? Because if you look up animal abuse in any search engine, you'll find endless oceans of disgusting, horrible, torturous treatment of every animal imaginable in basically every country you can think of. Doesn't mean that it's a good thing, but it does seem weird that you're specifically targeting China for this. I, look, why? Because it's a dog? Well, pigs are much smarter than dogs, and I think scientists agree that they're much closer to us and it can experience more, and therefore abuse on a pig, if we're considering experience of pain as a measure of morality when it comes to animals, then bad things happening to pigs should be worse than bad things happening to dogs, and yet you're not talking about pigs. Why, Sargon? Does that kind of go against what you're saying, or it just kind of sounds like you're picking the one animal that you know people will go, but that's like my pet. Oh, that's a horrible thing in the West. 
The reality is obviously very complicated, but it doesn't get solved by just quietly mumbling that everything in China should shut down because you didn't like a video that you saw. That's not how anything changes. It's just a virtue signal. You can see the dogs in cages just sat there next as he's butchering one. It, 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 is, it is actually disgusting. I'm getting confused. Are you talking about dogs still or are you talking about any of the animals in America that are butchered? I'm getting lost. And this is how they've got you in the West. They pass a bunch of laws so that you can't expose this animal cruelty in America and the United Kingdom and other places like that. So people who eat at McDonald's apparently think the cow that they got the beef from lived in a mansion and fell asleep one day and then never woke up. And then they surgically removed the beef and made this burger for you. The fact is there are more animals suffering right now than we can even imagine everywhere on earth. And the way to solve that is not by singling out some country because you saw a video you didn't like on YouTube. The the way to solve that is by making meat alternatives that taste as good or better, that are as good or better for you, the same price or cheaper. And that's where the world will move to. And then we're going to have a different problem of how do we maintain cows when no one cares that they exist anymore. So that's maybe too big for this video. But the point is, you saw a video you didn't like. Yeah, I see those too. And the whole economy should shut down because of that. And the fact that you think it's offensive to point out that these people are treating these animals really, really badly is ludicrous and this is why i think you're in fact a communist sympathizer bill maher didn't say one thing about animal rights animal cruelty nothing w what are you even talking about you're just projecting your own thoughts onto bill maher and saying i agree with that yeah that's your idea he's not talking about that and even more important than this really weird thing that you're doing by making this video into everything that you want it to say despite what it actually says even more important than that is there is no proof that this outbreak had anything at all to do with any wet markets, anyone eating a bat or a dog or a cat or a chicken or anything. That's not proven and yet you're just assuming for some weird reason that that's just granted. So then he goes on to explain, it's okay to call it the Chinese virus because... We refer to countries in, in the sort of abstract as political actors and we're talking about the government structure of it when we're talking about them as a political force. Yeah. Exactly. Like, for example, when the United States kills well over half a million Muslims and then gets everyone to start complaining about China for not killing half a million Muslims, you could say a sentence like, the United States is brainwashing low IQ idiots into hating China. That, that's a perfectly legit sentence. And you don't mean that every single American citizen is doing that, point granted. But what you're pretending not to know is that United States is not a people, whereas Chinese is a nation, a people, a language, and a culture. You do know English, right? You know that the word Chinese means all those things and that United States doesn't mean that, right? And furthermore, you have done literally nothing to prove that any of this outbreak had anything to do with any politics or wet markets or nuclear bombs or whatever the hell you're rambling about. So that just goes against what you're saying. You're literally just rambling without any facts at this point. Ma is completely right here. Yes, he was completely right, except that almost the entire video was completely wrong. So he was totally right about what again? None of the disease examples that he gave were right. Uh, he said it came from China. That seems to be correct based on the facts. What else? He didn't like burkas or something like that? I mean, what, what are you talking about, dude? We, how was he right? I would love to see an in-depth fact-based explanation from you on how he was right. Numerous hate crimes have been reported against Asian Americans in the wake of COVID-19. You do us a nice detailed ethnic breakdown of who's committing those hate crimes and we'll talk. When we finally know who to talk to about these hate crimes, I wonder if it looks like anything like the racial demographics of the people attacking Jews in New York City. Okay, Sargon, maybe nobody's really broken down what you're saying and given it back to you, kind of acting like a mirror, but this is what you've just said. You don't like animal abuse and you think butcheries are gross. Because of that, all butcheries and seafood shops and produce stores should be shut down across all of China. You think COVID-19 should be called the Chinese virus. You know that that will contribute to stigmatization against Chinese people and crimes against Chinese people, but it doesn't really concern you because the people who are committing those crimes are, you presume, black. I mean, you do realize that this is what you just said, right? Wow, that's really smart, dude. That's uh, great. But uh, again, Bill Maher did say, well, look, racists are always going to look for anything that gives license to their views. And so why should we modulate ourselves saying something that is factually true, as in this virus came from China, 
just because there are racists out there who hate Chinese people. I believe that is what you would call a straw man argument, sir. The argument is not that no one should say that this virus came from China. The argument is that the disease should be called the name of the disease. COVID-19 should be called COVID-19. If you want to break that protocol of language, it's up to you to explain why you want to, and it's up to the rest of the world to adopt that if they think that that reason is valid. And so far, I haven't heard even one valid explanation from you or Bill. The downside of calling it the Chinese virus is that as you've just shown us, hate crimes will go up against Chinese people. So there is a downside. It also moves us one baby step towards bad things happening between countries that we don't want. So we know that there's some cons, but the pros can outweigh that. I just haven't heard one pro yet. What is the pro of this? Everyone knows it came from China. So what's the pro of continuously calling it something that isn't its name to try to drive home the point that it came from Chinese people? It came from China, 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 China. What is the point of that? I'm not a racist. I don't want people to attack Chinese people. I don't racial attacks, and especially on Chinese people. Like, what do they do wrong? You know, they, they seem to be getting about their lives like the rest of us. So why the hell would anyone want to racially attack the Chinese? Yeah, why would anyone want to attack Chinese people, Sargon? You've done everything you could to stop it. You stigmatize Chinese people, you've given no valid reason to do so, and you've admitted that you know it will increase these attacks, and you're supporting that, and you're not giving any explanation as to why that would be a good thing to do. But, I mean, you're not for that, so... Let's make sure that people know. A lot of viruses are made in China, just so you know. Another fact you've just spread out there without any evidence that isn't correct, because I've actually done the research, as you can see in my other video. Uh, were you gonna say a Hong Kong flu from the United Kingdom? Or what, what were you gonna say, buddy? Wow, there's so many coming from China, like what? But then again, you don't have to do research. You just say things to your audience and for some reason they believe you. It's actually pretty interesting. So as you can see, Sargon of Akkad has built this video into an image that he wants it to be. And then for some reason he agrees with it all. Even though the actual video itself said very few of the things that he said it said. On the next video, we're gonna talk a little bit about this whole China lied, people died theory that Sargon has in another one of his videos. And I'm gonna debunk that as well. So until next time, thanks everybody. See ya.